Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to continue off on the inventory tutorials from where we left off. Now last time we essentially got it fully functioning with all the custom items, so I could pick up custom items, drop them, we could send them to the shared inventory, you know, drop them again and all the custom data will be transferred around correctly because we did this abstraction into custom items. Now I'm going to continue on this trend a little bit of what we've been doing with making things more scalable, more generic and essentially just sort of stronger in a real project. People seem to really be liking that. So if there's other videos you'd like to see, please let me know in the comment section. It's very helpful and I promise you I read all of them and I try and respond to every single one. Now getting into it, let's try and think about how we want this to happen. So what we're going to continue doing here is we're going to have our items show up properly in our inventory. So you can see when I pick them up, they're just this sort of basic gray color, which is, you know, the, the default color of the sprite. The reason for this is because we're not, obviously not initializing the custom data into the tile because we, well, at this point, we don't know what custom data it is, right? So let's just try and look into it a little bit just to go a little bit deeper into what the issue that we have at hand here is. So you can see essentially our inventory tile, it gets the inventory item that it needs to set. And well, it just obviously right now, it just defaults to setting the sprite color to white because that's always the safest color to just default to. And this is fine for items that don't hold any custom data, right? But when they hold custom data, well then what? Now it's easy to just say, well, let's set it up to load the custom data. But the whole point of this custom data setup is that every item can have their own data which makes it a little bit more tricky. Now, of course, we could go through and check the custom data and, you know, if it's of every, or if it's of any kind of type, then we handle it this way. We could do that, but the issue is that's not very scalable. We won't be able to handle it very cleanly on sort of a per item basis. So I have a much better approach and I think let's just try and get started on that. So the idea of the approach is essentially what holds the data, right? So we have these inventory tiles and you can see the data essentially we have right now, which is changing is essentially the icon and quantity. Now, why don't we instead have whatever needs to be initialized into the tile be loaded dynamically instead of being there statically. That way we can change what we actually need. Let's for example, say you have a weapon with a bunch of attachments. Well, you can load in all the sprite attachments, load them on top of each other or whatever you'd like to do with just a sort of a custom tile loading instead. So instead of being sort of a generic tile, like what we have here, or not a generic tile, essentially like a, a sort of a static tile like we have here, we'll sort of load in the actual tile for the displaying. That way you can go as wild as you want. If you want wacky effects on the tiles, if you want custom data loading, or if you just want it to be a standard tile, it'll be very easy for you to do. Now, what I do want to keep, and first of all, this is also where it comes in as a strength that we have a tile prefab, because this way we only have to change one tile. Now, let's use it to our strengths the fact that the inventory tile is already on every single tile that we have, right? So this is essentially what's going to be sort of the engine of it, and we don't really have to go much deeper than that. So what we do want is we do want the layer essentially handling our, uh, you know, new, I guess, sort of nested tile, if you want to call it that, right? So we'll have the inventory tile, which will be sort of the brain, and then we'll have a nested tile, which actually holds what needs to be held. Uh, and I guess actually we can very easily make that first. So let's just open up the tile prefab here and let me make a new child object. And let's just make this child object, I guess let's just call it a tile light. And let's make one for just the default setup, right? So for that, we just need icon and we need quantity. So I'm just gonna drag these in as a child of this, and then we can essentially prefab this. But before we do that, let's just make the script and basic setup for it. So calling it now a tile item, let's make a new uh, script and let's make it an abstract. So I'm just gonna make it a, and let's do inventory tile item just to make it very clear what it is. Might be a little bit long of a name, but you get the idea. All right, so here we have the inventory tile item. And now first things first, we just want it to be a mono behavior. And let's of course make sure to abstract it. Pretty much everything that we want this to hold should just be a public abstract void set item, which we can just use to load the item however we want. So this will just be well, our item. And that's pretty much it, right? So now we can take this into our inventory tile and let's set Let's have a field up top just for a default tile. So we can always have something to fall back on easily. I think that's just clean to have. So that'll be default tile item, example, something like that. Um, and what we can actually do here now is we can remove these fields that we have here because we no longer want them handled by the inventory tile. They'll be handled by the inventory tile item. Uh, so we can um, we can cut these and let's actually before I do that, hold on. Uh, let's make the abstraction already. So we have the A inventory tile item. Let's just go make another script, which will be Let's just call it inventory tile item underscore default, for example, just so we have, this will be our default one. This one will of course inherit from the A inventory tile item. We will load in the inherited method. And then in here is where we'd want to essentially move our image and our text, you know, the default stuff that we already have. We want to move it in here. Let me of course just load in the types that we need and let's set them up again. So we do icon.sprite equals to item dot 
uh, preset dot icon, I believe it's called, like that. And we do the quantity text dot text equals to item dot quantity dot to string. There we go. So that's essentially all of that set up now. And now that means we can basically remove it entirely from here. You can also do the color white if you wanted to do that. Um, but either way, we can basically do that now. Um, and what I think we want to do now is we want to keep track of what our current inventory tile item is. So we want to do a current inventory tile item, current item, uh, I guess current tile item, just to make it extra clear. Um, and essentially what we want to do is when you set the item now, we want to check is there a current inventory tile item. If not, we want to instantiate it. And one of the easiest ways to do that is we need to figure out um, which one we want to use. Now, in this case, we can just use the default tile item. And I guess let's do that first. So what we can just do is var current, whoops, no, not var, sorry, underscore current tile item equals to instantiate the default item as a child of the inventory tile. And that's essentially it. And then down here, we'll just do set item and then we'll just feed it our inventory item like that. And then essentially when we reset the tile, we just want to do if there is a current tile item. Then we want to set it back to null. And of course, first, we also want to destroy it. So we just do destroy to the current tile item that game object. And that should essentially be it. Now we should work as a default tile again. So now let's go back here and let's set up this default tile here. So we can just drag and drop the default in here, drag the icon onto that, the quantity text. And now let's make a prefab out of it. There we go. We can now delete that. And then in here on the actual inventory tile, we of course want to feed it this as the default. So now they will have a go-to. So you notice now how the quantity text have disappeared. That's because now they're not yet initialized with any specific tile and they can initialize with any. Now we're not actually initializing with any, we're still initializing with the default item, but we just want to make sure that it actually works, which it seems to do. So you can see now when I drop them, everything is back to working as it should. However, the big difference is now notice in the hierarchy how when I pick something up, this is now instantiated and when I drop it or remove it again, you can see it's essentially removed again. Now, I'm aware that people are going to be screaming at me that this isn't optimized because we're essentially instantiating all the time. You could make a pooling system for this. I'm just not going to get into it now because this video is not about optimization and performance. It's about making it work. And also, I will just say it's not horrible to instantiate and destroy. It does create some garbage, yes, but it's not the end of the world. Again, right now, just focus on making your game functional and we'll make it better later. Now, here comes the custom part of the functionality. What we should do now is we should actually tap into the item preset, which we have right here, and also allow the preset to set its own uh, custom inventory tile, right? So a inventory tile item, tile item. This way, we can now allow them to actually set a custom item themselves. So going back to the inventory tile, where we now instantiate this, we actually want to figure out which one to instantiate. So let's get the tile prefab, and we'll try and get that from the inventory item dot preset dot tile item and then what you can do is double question mark and then the default tile item what the double question marks mean essentially just use this if it's not null and if it is null go to this that's basically what it means so now we're we're getting either this one if it exists or we're just defaulting well to the default and now we can spawn the tile prefab and set the item of that cool everything right now if you go and test it should work exactly the same but this is really where the magic is going to happen we're going to go back to our scripts we're going to make another inventory tile item script but this time we're going to make one for our custom item now of course this is where you'd make it for your item just mind you my custom item is called custom item so therefore i can easily just do it like so and here we of course want to again inherit from the a inventory tile item we want to expand on that um, and here we want to set the item now i still want the basic functionality that we have in here and you could technically also inherit from this if you'd want to and override it or something like that i'm just going to write it again just because it's you know, very little handling as so let's just do the same thing copy this in here and yeah now we're essentially good to go but this is where we want to handle the custom logic so let's go into our custom item really quickly and just see so as you can see here where we set the custom data back on the item what we essentially do is we get the custom data we unpack the custom data with the type of custom data and then we just set the color. That's it. And we already made this packing. We don't have to worry about it again. Only thing we have to worry about is the fact that this custom data right now is private, meaning we can't actually access it. But that's easily fixable by just making it public, which means now it's accessible from our inventory tile script. So we can pretty much just copy this whole custom data line. We can get in here to our custom item. We can just plop this in, make this a var. Uh, and of course, this type of custom data, if you just write it yourself, it should ask to fill it out from the from the custom item type here 
Uh, and of course, the data that we want to feed is in the item and it's called item.customData. And there we go. So now we have the custom data, which should hold the color. We can go get the icon.color, set it equal to custom data.color. And that's it. Now we have a custom inventory tile that's essentially initializing, utilizing the actual custom data. And now we just have to define when this is used. And of course, we also have to set it up. So you can see we have the tile item default. I'll make a new tile item, call this tile item custom item. Open that up. And we'll, of course, do tile item custom item here. And I'll just drag the icon in here, the quantity in here, and remove the old default one. So now we have a custom one here. And now going into our resources, I can now find the custom item preset. And we can give it the tile item uh, prefab that we just made here. So here we go. I'm going to drag and drop that in. And that should be it. So now when we start the game and I pick up an item, you can see that's now colored blue. That's now colored red. That's this gray. And you can see as we move them over, they're now colored correctly because they correctly initialize from the custom data that is received with the item. And again, just to show you, it doesn't really matter much in this case, but this of course also works on the client. So let me just have the client start up here. Oh, actually one other thing I would want to do is just in here, let's just add some very brief safety. This shouldn't matter a lot, but we just want to do if there is no tile prefab. Let's just log it out just so we always know if something happens. It's always better to catch these things yourself and then return. And what I want to do is I want to log out uh, no tile prefab found for item inventory item dot preset dot name, for example, or dot item name, sorry. Failed to default oh, to fail to default to default tile prefab. And then we just feed this. The reason for this is just so you can catch it yourself, just so you don't get null references in case you forgot to fill out this or something like it. It's just always good to be on the safe side. But again, nothing should really have changed. I can pick up something here. I load in with the client. So now you can see the client can pick them up. Client can move them over. And as you can see, they initialize properly all the way around. And the whole round trip just works. Beautiful. Look at that. That's Now we have a very scalable item system where you can very easily handle stuff on a per item basis. And this is really the most sort of modular type of scalability you'll you'll be able to get with these kind of systems. Is uh, At least this gives you a lot of freedom, gives you a lot of play spaces to optimize. And it really leaves a lot of room for, well, freedom for you as the developer. So if you like this video, remember to do leave a like, comment and subscribe. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.